It's the gray matter in between. No black or white. No wrong or right. Just going down with the feeling. Somewhere near the Canadian border, they found it. My parents connected in the wilds of Washington with like-minded people who wanted to raise their family in a more natural place. Fortunately for me, I get to call this home. There were seven families with 23 kids. They were like brothers and sisters. We shared everything. We started in tents, then trailers, then helped build each other's houses. Every day, as kids, we were outside, whether we were working on a place or playing in the nature. And now that I get to come home now and be connected with my home in this place, that connection just grows deeper. Growing up, jobs were scarce. My parents did whatever it took to help us survive. Eventually, my mom became a teacher helping out the troubled kids at the school. And my dad was a pilot, top gun in fact, flying F-8 Crusaders back in Vietnam. I think my dad can relate to my lifestyle really well. He knows what it takes to fly full speed and the consequences of what's involved if you crash. He understands that dedication to being in the moment and flying, whether it's on skis or, uh, you know, speed flying. When you're flying, it's all about managing energy. You want to be able to have altitude that you can convert to airspeed, or airspeed you can convert to altitude. Life is kind of the same way. It's all about managing energy. If you've got something going on in your life that's really difficult, you have to be able to draw from those resources you have to bring you back to where you need to be. I walk outside, you know, fortunately to be able to go ski on some winter days, and it's like I'm plugging in to the outside, but that's also who I am. I was that kid that wanted to try to pound the square through the circle hole. I was that kid that loved to get dizzy on the swing. Always wanted to do something in a bit of a different way. And in my community with the older boys, I was always accepted. I was one of the younger ones and the older boys took me under their wing. You know, we would, uh, run down the hill, jump off the roof into the snow, and eventually they taught me how to ski. After high school, I left the comfort, safety of my home valley and went to university. It was really the path of least resistance, and there I studied environmental studies and really became cynical because there was no solutions to these problems. And it took skiing and being with friends in the mountains to lose myself and change my perspective. When you first arrive in this crazy valley, uh, you come through the tunnel uh, from Geneva, you look up at the mountain and and uh, you see this needle on top of the rock and you're like, what the hell? 
it's impressive. It's uh, it's hard to even get the the scope of the size of the place. Hanging ice and sharp agues. To me, it's a powerful place. And skiing from there became my avenue. I lived in uh, Chamonix for a number of seasons, and there I found a place where people were living each day like it was their last. There was no boundary, it was only you, and as long as you weren't hurting anybody else, um, you could go as far as you wanted. We were going into the unknown on a daily basis. I lived in a tent out in the woods. If you had a corner of a room and could sleep, you know, on the floor, then that was uh, first class, so to speak. Now, fortunately, I had friends like Cami who were from Chamonix and I could stay on the couch for a while. Because I was following after a feeling and going from my heart and not really trying to figure things out, the people I was supposed to meet, they were there and I got to be a part of uh, Black Crows since the beginning. It was all about acceptance, you know? If you were a skier, then you were accepted. It didn't matter where you came from, it just mattered where you were going and what you were doing, and that was, that was skiing. And, Loving the life. Just like growing up, you know, I continued to always be outside. I needed to find a means and that led to wildland firefighting, and that was my work and summer community. So that wildland fire is, it's a, it's a wild thing. It can tear trees straight out of the ground and it creates its own weather system. And you know you don't want to be anywhere near it. And you know, it's, and you know that you're not we aren't in control. And how can we work with it? You wonder why some trees are left and others get scorched to the ground. Why do some get taken? Well, you know, some of us get, get to still be here. When I first came back from Chamonix, I was on that full nervous system charged, having to go for the moment to get an outside feeling to feel complete inside. It was just driving, 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 closer and closer, faster. I could hear what myself was saying, but I couldn't listen. And I, I drove myself right into the ground. This accident, you know, it's shocking. All of a sudden, the doctor's saying, you're going into surgery and it, you know, you broke your back real bad. Hitting the ground, made me grounded. And I realized that I was flying constantly in my mind with no real sense of, of, of place again. Like where I was in the world, I'd come back and was just wasted from constantly pushing. And bam, I hit the ground and then my feet found a place.
breathing. It's like that breath is the most important thing in your life. Just walking, noticing the beauty of the light, the dapple light coming through, and the needles on the trees. So more than once in my life, you know, this injury, nature again becomes the, the healer. Just looking up at the Mother Mountain, Tahoma, there's no denying the power of that place. It's alive. She's alive. I don't care if I suck at skiing. I'm <laughs> I, not walking down another I'm fucking hill this. and watching these bastards fly by. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna learn how to fucking slide. Yeah. <laughs> even if I suck, I can get down way faster. So I found that, you know, that with just deeper appreciation, I just, I found the simplicity of skiing again for skiing's sake. There isn't anything better. And to realize again how special and gifted we are to just ski. To share it with a like-hearted, like-spirited friend. That's probably one of the most special things you can share with anybody. What do I want? What can I do to give back? You know? Come on out here. Let's look at it. Arlen, I'm going to follow you right past the tree traverse left. It's not all about me and how I feel. But what is it that will help the younger ones feel like they can follow after what they want to do? I want these kids that are coming up to be able to feel like they can be okay with just really being themselves, to hang with the kids this year and share that, what I like to say, the caca zone. It's inside of you. It's being able to let go and be free. And when you see that caca zone inside of them, you see the light dawn in their eyes and they feel that freedom. And it's not just about their ski turn but it's that it's about that the letting go and knowing that they're okay one of my beautiful friends Swiss Tony said you know you just gotta let go and love it Sliding on snow, using gravity, connected with the place and sharing it with your friends. And that's it, you know? It's like taking the blinders off and looking all the way down and trusting yourself, and then you're free. That's full wingspan to me. do today last forever.